autumn came early in the year of 1894. The fog and the rain had come in September and Madame Vashtra was bored of life in the capital. The fog makes the air unbreathable and the rain never stops, she complained. Are we stuck indoors forever? Nothing lasts forever, I told her, to which she answered with a snort and a sneer. Hmm, are you a philosopher now, my dear? Philosophy is easy to take with a nice cup of tea, I replied, pouring a cup for her and myself. Why don't we go out tonight? I see the explorer, Professor Challenger, has returned from his travels and promises to show some of his discoveries to the public. He says they are incredible. He would say that, snapped Vastra. There's probably nothing more than a few broken pots and spears. I really couldn't be bothered. Her boredom was broken as Strax entered the room bearing a calling card on a silver tray. Someone calling themselves the Right Honourable Earl of Rosebury wishes to see you, Mum, said Strax. I told her you were busy drinking tea, but the lady was most insistent. <sighs> that is because the Prime Minister is not a lady, reaching for the veil she usually wore when accepting visitors. Nor is she accustomed to being kept waiting. Please show her in at once. The Prime Minister entered the room, and after bowing over Vastra's hand, he glanced at Strax and myself. Whatever you have to say, you may say in front of Jenny and Strax, Prime Minister, said Vastra. They have my complete trust in all things. He didn't seem pleased to hear this, but having no option, he came straight to the point. There is to be an exhibition tonight at the Academy of Science. An inventor from Halifax is going to demonstrate a device that can actually travel through time. I avoided Vastra's eyes as she snorted. <laughs> Impossible. That's what I thought, agreed the Prime Minister. But I am assured this is very much real. Imagine what would happen if a foreign power had access to such things. Imagine what such a thing would do for the British Empire. We could control the past and the future. We could rule the world now and always. I shuddered at the thought. What an horrible idea. No nation should have such power over others. The Prime Minister glared at me. Better us than the French or the Germans or the Russians. Or, heaven forbid, the Americans. I want you to guard this machine and its inventor. The future and past is in your hands. The queues were already forming outside the Royal Academy of Science, but Vastra, myself and Strach swept by them and were shown to the main auditorium where we first set eyes upon the time machine and its inventor, Professor Fideus Main, a thin, keen-eyed young man who regarded us with suspicion. So, this is the time machine. Does it really work? asked Madame Vastra. Uh, uh, of course it does, said the professor. I travelled back to the dawn of time and forward to the end of days. Strax peered at the contraption of brass and leather and was about to press the lever when the professor shouted at him, uh, Do not touch that! It is not a toy! Strax was unimpressed. It's smaller on the inside. <laughs> How primitive! Professor Main poked his pigeon chest out and squared up at Strax. Those are fighting words where I come from. I'll have you know. Indeed, said Strax, a gleam in his eye. Where I come from, all words are fighting words. I stepped between them as a shot rang out and the bullet zinged off the brass fittings of the time machine. I whirled around and saw the figure of a man dart behind a curtain at the back of the stage. In the space of two heartbeats, Vashtra was upon our assailant, having leaped upon his back and beaten him to the ground. Who are you? Why did you shoot at us? But before he could answer, more shots broke out. I turned to see Strax and Professor sheltering behind the time machine as two assassins opened fire with pistols. Strax reached inside his waistcoat and produced two vibration grenades, which he tossed at the gunman. The grenades caused the two men to vibrate on the spot until they lost consciousness. We can question them later, said Vastra, turning back to the man beneath her. Now, tell me, who sent you? Or do I have to eat you? 
the man recoiled in terror. No, 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 please, he cried in an accented English. My name is Diego Castania. I represent the principle of Cantarinas. My government believes that with your device we can defend ourselves against our neighbours and become a world power. Enough, said Vastra. We will be able to take our rightful place alongside some of the most... I said enough, snapped Vastra, turning to face the professor, her eyes ablaze with anger. I cannot allow you to demonstrate this machine of yours. The professor stared in astonishment. But why? Why not? It is the greatest invention since... well, since ever... It It will mean the end of life on this planet as we know it, said Vastra. Already in the space of five minutes there have been attempts to steal and kill you. You humans are not ready for this. Jenny is right. No nation should have such power. But it, it is not intended as a weapon. My time machine will be used for the research. Historical research. Historical research? (laughs) What a waste, sneered Strax. Time machine, even ones as basic as this, are a valuable military weapon. Vashtra rolled her eyes. Strax, please. Professor, your motives may be pure, but think of it. Already your Prime Minister wants to use it to make the British Empire last for all time. I am sure that every nation on Earth will want to use it in the same way. I cannot let this happen. Tell the world you are a charlatan. Destroy the machine. Tears filled the professor's eyes. I I cannot. I cannot do that. My my reputation. Is your reputation worth one life? Is it worth condemning humankind to an eternal slavery? The professor nodded. I, I, I see your point. Let me deactivate the machine. I'll do as you say. The professor sat at the controls of the time machine and pulled the lever. At once the machine began to hum and crackle with energy. A sound not unlike the doctor's TARDIS filled the air. I'm I'm sorry, madam, but I cannot be uninvented. People would always be hounding me for the truth. If what you say is true, then I will never be safe and neither will this world. I, I'm taking my time machine to, to another time, a safer time. The time machine whirled faster and faster until finally it vanished from view, leaving only the smell of electricity in the air. Bastra smiled sadly. I hope he finds peace wherever he's gone. Let us inform the Prime Minister that tonight's exhibition has been cancelled. <laughs>